the analysis of equity of S serves to be very helpful, especially when you have to prepare the consolidated statement of changes in equity. In my ads acquisition section, I want to highlight this revaluation surplus that you've created, that you must remember to include as part of the ad acquisition equity of S. The rest of it, we have discussed as part of the ad acquisition consolidation journal entry. Remember when we now work with the since acquisition equity of the subsidiary, my work process is to start with the trial balance equity items of the subsidiary, then adjust them for the effect of related consolidation journal entries to give me the equity that's allowed to be in the group, which then gets attributed. So let's apply that to the equity items applicable in this example, which is retained earnings. I start with the TB retained earnings opening balance as I'm busy with the since to opening balance period. I adjust for the effect of consolidation journal entries, which is the at acquisition elimination of 7,500 against retained earnings. And now something that's new in this example is that 2,000 Rand additional depreciation relating to the X9 period. That then leaves me with the retained earnings of S that's allowed to be in the group, which I now can attribute to the parent and NCI. This is exactly the thought process we followed when we calculated the opening retained earnings attributable to NCI in Journal 5, where we wrote this journal entry. For the current reporting period, the only movement in equity is profit for the year. I start with the profit on the TB. I adjust for the effect of those consolidation journal entries changing the profit of the group and the profit of S included in the group. And this was for the 2000 Rand additional depreciation for X day. That then leaves me with the profit of S that's allowed to be in the group and that gets attributed. Remember, for every amount attributed to NCI, you need a consolidation journal entry. All these amounts attributed to the parent in this column will be added to the parent's numbers in the consolidated statement of changes in equity. In the consolidated statement of changes in equity for the year ended 31 December 20X10 of example 7.9, the basics um, for share capital, we always only include the share capital of the parent as the subsidiary share capital gets eliminated through the at acquisition consolidation journal entry. When we have to present the column for non-controlling interests, Preparing the analysis of equity is very helpful as all these amounts comes from that analysis of equity. The revaluation surplus column in this example has no amounts in it. Why is that? There was a revaluation surplus of 20,000 Rand created in this example but it got eliminated as part of the ad acquisition equity of the subsidiary through the ad acquisition consolidation journal entry. The only time when you will have a revaluation of the subsidiary included in the consolidated statement of changes in equity would be when the subsidiary recognized a revaluation surplus in his separate financial statements since acquisition date. That would then be the revaluation surplus of S that is allowed to be in the group, which you would then attribute between the owners of B and NCI. That would be an exact same process as you would follow with retained earnings. When we calculate the amounts in the retained earnings column, 
we start with the amounts from the parent and we add to that the amounts of the subsidiary attributable to P, which we've calculated on the analysis. Each of these amounts have a detailed calculation at the bottom of the statement, which you should work through.